Hey everybody, I'm Red. This is my first ever video review on here, so I thought to start on what might just be my favorite movie of all time. You guessed it, Evolution of a Filipino Family. Or in its original title, Evolution ng Isang Pamilyang Pilipino. This is a movie by Lav Diaz, one of my favorite artists as well, and released in 2004 though it was made for almost a decade before that. I'm sure you'd know why if you already heard a bit about this movie, but my goal here though is to give you enough of what ideas it engages with and the special way that it tackles them. The stuff that really affected me. Hopefully it'll encourage you to experience it for yourself. If you're here after watching the movie, I hope this will help give a kind of reviewing of its ideas because it's a pretty huge thing to digest. Not to mention very open and varied in its interpretations. That's also why I'm doing this, to start a discussion with all of you. Okay, let's begin. We are story animals. That's what separates the humans in Lav Diaz's films from the animals that walk among them. We have evolved to tell stories. Ang kwentong ito ay kwento ng aking lola, ng aking ama, ng aking ina, kwento ni Tia Hilda, kwento ko at ng aking mga kapatid, at kwento ni Reynaldo. Evolution differentiates itself from mere growth in that the change denotes a longer time, a slower pace, and the struggle, and thus more drastic transformations. The movie runs for about 10 hours, with a narrative that spans across 15 years, much of which composes of dead time. These are periods wherein the events are minimal and given the room to breathe. They're made to feel even longer than they already are. Often, characters are found simply waiting or walking. This always gave me the feeling of a sort of wandering toward the future. The longer I feel stuck or bored, I'm just made to ask, what are we waiting for? Where are we walking towards? There is a sense of determinism found in these as much as there is in continuous streams of water and elders assigning careers to children. I think plenty of its themes can be found like that in small things that don't usually jump out as really important or eventual. Concepts that affect me and build on top of each other can be found in these seemingly empty slices of life. I think this film effectively uses boredom. The absence, again, leads me to constantly ask. And I've always felt like it's an interesting and ironically engaging way to enjoy a movie. That's not to say that there aren't any grandly significant moments here. That feeling of determinism that I got from this movie, like in this scene, was very hopeful. I see that positivity with the majority of Filipinos here, looking to the future. I think that does influence how older generations act upon the next ones, as I've seen in this movie, which just reflects what I see in life. I mean, the nature of this movie as a period piece should hint that life in our nation does progress as I think majority of us would already believe. It's set during martial law. We have the benefit of hindsight knowing we got through these dark periods, right? Well, this documentary footage is of the Manjola Massacre in 1987. 
It occurred after martial law already. The new Aquino administration brought the opportunity of bettering the massive economic inequality perpetuated by the regime of the ousted Marcos. The footage started with a protest of farmers and workers who were asking for genuine land reform. After the government's complete inaction for them, the video ends with a violent dispersal. Shots rang out. Many of the protesters were killed, even more were injured. No one was punished for the deaths of these farmers. Survivors and relatives received no compensation. We're still at a period wherein the state brutalizes us with impunity. Majority of Filipinos still spend majority of their time working on land that can't be their own. This movie spends a lot of its time just farming. But is that really something wrong? Isn't that just realism? Oh, and here's another fun fact about the Philippines. Majority of it is not Manila. Unlike what looking at majority of Filipino movies would have you believe. I really appreciate these proportional representations. It's a really interesting juxtaposition to me. Seeing these incredibly grand events, but captured through archival documentary newsreel footage, being spliced with completely simple and minimal living, but in front of a digital camera shooting a narrative being performed. It feels like what the film is trying to let me explore about the Filipino identity can be found within the great length between these two extents. We are our reality and our fiction, for these dictate us as much as we dictate it. I feel this expression of dynamic art in the statue that moves. It's present in the shady characters' need to assassinate Lino Broca, one of our most moving artists. This movie shows the importance of the life that we give to art, that it gives back to us. The film also blurs the lines between storyteller, story, and audience. The diegetic arrangements emphasize just how drama is ingrained in our lives. Hi. Don't come at it thinking it's something to sit through. A piece of advice that I give about watching most movies is to watch it like how you would watch a sunset. No need to strain yourself. It's not like this movie is hard to keep up with, but if you can't, then feel free to relax. In fact, it serves a wonderful break from a reality and even a cinematic zeitgeist that feels sometimes like it moves too fast. There's even a nice fireside jam sesh in the movie, which just comforted me so much that I thought that I could fall asleep. And I really think that lullaby quality is something that I should thank it for, especially with how much trouble I had sleeping at the time. The satisfaction doesn't come from logging its hours. Sit with it. I mean, we always watch people. Maybe not in fields, but in coffee shops, bus rides, sidewalks. In moments of self-reflection, we look to others. The film gives us plenty of people to watch. And all of us have our own stories that are just as important as the others. Each with immense complexity and drama if we're only willing to look long enough. Although we have uh, developed some positive traits no, from these two waves of uh, colonization, we really have to come to terms with our own identity as a people. You know, in, even in the movies, for example, the, all these karate movies, no, they are not doing us any good. They, they belong to another culture. And uh, the so-called Western movies with bourgeois values, they're not doing us any good. Saglit po naming pinuputo lang panayam ni Hami Soto kay Lino Broca for eh, si Lino Broca commercial pala break. Yan, eh. Dilipat na natin, nahuli-tuli tayo. 
I actually grew up thinking drama was a Tagalog word due to its ubiquity here. It was shown as a means of relating to one another and as a means of escape. Drama unites families. It was made as an exercise for empathy. Catharsis from it can help with coping. Fernando, the strict father figure played by Ronnie Lazaro as you can see here, he notably detests drama, but has the hardest time dealing with tragedy. His point still stands though. These imagined situations drama presents us with may lead to pure escapism. Ubusin mo ba yung oras mo dyan sa pagkinig ng mga drama niyan? Tulog ka na. Maaga tayong lalakad bukas. Ano pang nangyayari sa batang niyan? Kadagalaw niya, radyo. Radyo, radyo, puro radyo. Ano na lang yung masama sa pagkinig ng drama? Buti nga, naliligaw yung bata eh. Wala akong sinasabing masama. Masyado lang nauubos ang panahon niya sa radyo. Hindi na siya nakakatrabaho. This was actually Lino Broca's argument against Demel de Marcos. This is why he filmed slums and public unrest under the regime. Stories could spark the revolution as much as it could serve opium to the masses. That was the danger of censorship in martial law. That's why I'll always have respect for art that transgresses. This piece of art served its purpose to voice out a different story. The approach of Lav Diaz differs from the, for lack of a better term, authoritarian approach to storytelling, wherein there's a singular point and that point is forced down the audience's throats. Instead of this tunnel vision, evolution of a Filipino family provides us a vast field of ideas and allows us to roam autonomously within it. This is another way of blurring the line between spectator and spectacle. Watching does not mean passive waiting or walking then. It becomes an active mining for your own meaning, which is at times a struggle. But it's the same struggle that leads to evolution. Thank you for watching.